There has not been a report like Sick of It before. It is an immensely powerful contribution uh, that can and I believe will inform policy and health service action in relation to deaf people. And its findings are very sobering, as I don't need to tell you. In fact, some of them I found very shocking. There is no good reason why deaf people should be twice as likely as hearing people to have undiagnosed blood pressure, or why they should be more likely to have other undiagnosed conditions. That fewer than 15% of deaf people say that their GP is good, good at listening to them, is something that concerns me very deeply. And there's a lot more in the report to consider, such as access to talking therapies. So we and our partners in the NHS um, will, I assure you, consider this report very carefully indeed. Uh, and I can also assure you that the government recognises that a lot more needs to be done. But uh, it's fair to say we have had some wins. And these include uh, a national screening programme for newborn children, reductions in waiting times for both assessment and treatment, and uh, not uh, unimportantly, an expansion in choice for hearing aids. NHS England is working on information standards for accessible personalised information so that patients will be kept thoroughly informed in a format that best it best suits them. NHS England will also be publishing guidance on making adjustments to meet people's needs. <coughs> now, sometimes those adjustments will need to be quite significant, but often they will be small changes that could have been made already if only there had been greater awareness of deaf people's needs. The broader push to improve online access to uh, health and care services will, I think, also make a significant difference. It is plainly unacceptable that reasonable adjustments are not being made, and we expect everybody to book an appointment in the same way, whether they are deaf or hearing. And we want deaf people to know uh, how they can register complaints um, and for that process to be easy. Um, but that said, uh, our main focus must be on ensuring that there is less to complain about. It should be unacceptable to all of us that anybody's health care needs should go unmet because they can't hear well. Whether such needs um, are not being met um, knowingly or through carelessness, uh, it doesn't matter. It's simply unacceptable and does not meet the duties uh, of, of uh, health care practitioners under the Equality Act. The public sector equality duty requires all public bodies, including the NHS, of course, to advance equality of opportunity and to recognise the need to um, eliminate discrimination. It is an anticipatory duty. And that's very important. It means that inaction is every bit as unacceptable as outright discrimination. So whilst it is vitally important that we continue to make a progress in diagnosing hearing loss or, or deafness and improving services for those people, that in itself isn't enough. Deaf people have got to be able to expect the same comprehensive access to health and care as those without hearing loss. They must be able to register concerns and complaints. They must be able to communicate effectively 
with service providers and have no cause to fear that not being able to hear well means that these rights will be compromised. So I'd like to end by thanking all of you for your efforts. Um, and I say again, this report is um, vitally important, I believe, in our understanding of what it means to be profoundly deaf um, and what, that, what the impact can be uh, on people's health and their livelihoods and indeed their life expectancies.